and we've got somebody else joining us. Right. So, so this is being recorded um, and hopefully it will be made available to anyone that wants to watch it through my YouTube channel. So let's make a start. So for the new CAE Market Assurance Program, you actually have to do the general biosecurity module first and then you, you do the uh, CAE map as a second activity. So the basic requirements for the general biosecurity map are things that you need to do anyway. So you've got to have all your animals permanently identified once they're over three months of age. You must provide the basic details, so your property identification code or biosecurity entity number, name, address um, for the database. And you can apply for an exemption from the database if you wish. Then you've got to have a basic biosecurity plan. And you must have an agreement with your vet. So that's the requirements for the general biosecurity plan. Now, Meat and Livestock Australia through the Integrity Systems have a record keeping book that would get you a fair way along uh, for the basic record keeping. And that was posted out only uh, a couple of weeks ago. So as part of the biosecurity plan that you need to set up with your vet, you've got to do a property assessment by the vet who will look at the boundary fences and any barriers such as fenced off tree, shelter belts. Um, we'll look at your goat handling facilities and if they're used by another species and if they're good enough to um, allow for the proper collection of samples. Looking at the feral or other animal populations on your property, looking at what animals and activities go on on your neighbour's property, sites where potentially contaminated water or faeces could enter and the previous grazing history of that land. So, so you've got to have a herd management plan with a map and it's recommended that photos be taken of the boundary fences, describe all the species of animals on the neighbouring property, uh, looking at um, yards and facilities. So let's have a look and for some commonly asked questions. So having a biosecurity plan, does that mean you can't accept animals for mating by your buck? You can still do that if it's supervised hand mating and there's a special area that's clean to show venue standards and is not grazed by your goats. And this is generally um, done on the property map that the vet will have a look at. So in the past, I've done things such as the driveway, the garage, the veranda. They're all things that your goats don't graze and can be used for a hand mating area. So it's got to have a special area and the herd has to be the same or higher market assurance program starters and you get a copy of their certificate if they're not in the database. Or if the herd is not in, in a map, you get a national goat health declarations. So that's what the rules say, but should you? 
my recommendation is different from the GOAT map uh, because the estrous mucus of CAE positive does contains lots of white blood cells and I believe it's very infectious to bucks. So ideally, I'd only accept a doe for mating from your buck if you knew that that doe had tested negative for CAE. So even though the map allows it, I still wouldn't recommend it. And if you look at my website, I've written an article there about mating and the spread of CAE, which is well referenced and you can have a read of that and make your own decisions. So the next step, once you've got your general biosecurity plan, you then go to the CAE Market Assurance Program module. The first step of that is you must have a VET agreement with the GOAT owners. So as part of that agreement, the GOAT owner must provide past laboratory tests and histories must make sure that all the permanent IDs of all the goats are readable. So that can be tattoos, um, it can be ear tags. And that was a requirement anyway of the biosecurity plan. You must present all eligible goats for testing or follow-up tests. So that means all goats over three months of age. So that's a difference with the current uh, schemes in New South Wales and Queensland, which said six months. And that's because research has shown that the maternal antibodies have gone by three months. You agree that you will only sell any positives either to slaughter or with full disclosure. So that means you disclose it on your goat health statement. And I would get the new purchaser to sign that goat health statement. You've got to notify your vet within seven days of any goats with signs of CAE, and you'll notify the Department of Primary Industries or whatever it's called in your state uh, of any confirmed cases. And you must keep records, including movements, and make those available to any auditor that comes. But you've got to keep movement records anyway. In Queensland, I looked up the penalty this afternoon. And if you don't provide uh, records of animal movements, it's a $28,000 fine. And if you leave MAT or you're expelled from MAP, you surrender any certificate to the vet. There are four compulsory forms. There's a corrective action and improvement report, which we'll cover later. The review checklist and report, they're generally done in combination with the vet. The agreement between the herd owner and the approved veterinarian, which is done with the vet, and a document control register. And that just says where the current documents are kept. And that could just be filing cabinet, bottom drawer. It could be a C drive folder, CAE map, for example, um, just so that you've got a record of where all the documents are kept. So let's have a look at if you're starting from scratch, how you go, go about it. So if you're non-assessed, or if you have been positive, you've removed the positive, you've done some correction actions, six months has passed, then you can have an annual vet review. And then you can go two ways. Either test everything above three months of age by blood tests, and then in six to 24 months time, have a second blood test of the whole herd of all animals over three months. And then once you get that second blood test, your CAE MM1. 
Now, if you're in an existing scheme, the most likely scenario is that you will just go automatically into a relevant level of CAE MM based on your current scheme. But this is new, and that is a bulk milk test that can be done of all the milkers in the herd. And if you have four of those, six to nine months apart, you can then join MM1. So if you go the bulk milk test route, you've got four tests. If you go the individual blood test um, route, there's two tests. So it takes longer if you're relying on bulk milk or the milk fat tests than if you're doing individual blood samples. Then once you're MM1, you go through the vet review again, which is every 12 months. And then you either have a second whole herd blood test six to 24 months later, and then you go to MM2 level. And if you're going the bulk milk or milk fat um, route, it's two more tests. Okay. So let's have a look at um, this table, which is um, in the manual. And I'll just move this out. So for a monitored negative one, you've got the individual animal blood tests or pooled ELISA testing, or you've got the bulk milk testing for the milk fat. And so that you either complete two negative um, blood tests or the four negative bulk milk fat tests. Then you can join to MM2. And the little X there is the year that you join. And again, you've got to have another whole negative test of the herd or two bulk milk fat tests. So that's the way you progress. Now, unlike the Yoni scheme, there is no MM3. There's only one MM1 and MM2. So these are some common questions that people ask me. Can I still attend shows and stay in the CAE Market Assurance Program? And the answer is yes. So ideally, shows, uh, exhibition and sale venues will provide a certificate of compliance uh, because they've been audited. I've audited um, uh, events where they've had goats on display and you just go and have a, a, a look at the biosecurity requirements. Are uh, the pens separated enough um, so that herds aren't in contact with each other? So that's uh, one way of doing it, having a venue audit, or else where the herd manager has assessed the housing and hygiene standards, and that's been approved by your goat mat veterinarian. And um, it's, common, it's a common thing in the existing Yoni's disease goat mat program, I provide guidelines to people that are in the Yoni's goat map and um, that says things like you will always take your own bedding, take your own um, feed and water containers, no share, don't use the water troughs at the venue, et cetera, et cetera. So just a few basic biosecurity um, principles and then I will approve attendances at shows. 
So the next question I'm often asked is, can I introduce a new buck or doe for herd mating at pastures? And the answer is in the new scheme, only if it's at the same or higher level of CAE map. And it's tested negative while in quarantine before joining the herd. So you can do it, but you must quarantine them. And during that quarantine period, get your vet to take a blood sample and submit it for testing for CAE. So that's different than the current New South Wales and Queensland CAE accreditation, which did allow the free movement between CAE accredited herds. So it's an, an extra level of protection, if you like. Now, I'm often asked about the sensitivity and specificity of the tests. Now, the ELISA test is greater than 96% sensitive and greater than 95% specific. The PCR test is only 80% sensitive, so it's going to miss some positives. But if you do get a positive, you're 100% certain that that was a positive. And the PCR test also picks up positives that the ELISA misses because they're close to kidding. Now, the key points to remember is that ELISA's test for antibodies, whereas your PCR tests for the actual particles of the CAE virus. Now, the IDEX um, ELISA test has been uh, extensively studied. Now, IDEX is a maker of veterinary laboratory testing machines and testing components. And they found a sensitivity of 98.6% and a specificity of 99.3. And to give you a comparison, the World Health Organization and the Therapeutic Goods Associate Authority of Australia, their requirement for a COVID rat test is a sensitivity of 80% and a specificity of 98%. So the ELISA tests for CAE are actually a very good test. And that's not surprising because CAE is a lifetime infection. However, not all ELISA tests are equal. So this is the from the AgriFutures report published in 2019 from De uh, Deborah Finlayson and Peter Kirkland from the New South Wales Department. And they looked at three different ELISA kits. The Elizabeth McCarthy Agriculture Institute, which is the New South Wales Department ELISA test, IDEX, and another one, another commercial kit, which is the VMRD. So they have a reference collection of CAE uh, negative and CAE positive tests. And they showed that not all ELISA kits are the same. IDEX had 11 false negatives and 35 false, sorry, 11 false positives and 35 false negatives. But even so, out of 361 tests from the negative collection and 293 from the positive collection, that's, that's pretty good results. So let's have a look at what happens if you buy a new goat. So if you buy a new goat from a map herd of the same or higher status, it must be kept in quarantine until it's tested. And once tested negative, it can be let out and um, join your herd. If it's from a non-map herd, you drop out of map. So this is where you need to think about if you want to start selling your goats. Um, 
you need to look at what's going to happen. Ideally, lots of people will join the new CAE map and so that in order to be able to sell your stock, you'll want to be at the same or higher status. So what happens if you buy a baby kid? So if it's from a map herd of the same or higher status, keep it in quarantine until it's tested and you test at three months of age and if it's negative, it joins the herd. You can stretch that out to 12 months. Say, for example, your vet's not visiting for CAE testing for 12 months. That's You can delay it till then, but you must um, test it negative before you mate it. And if you're from a non-MAP herd, if you buy a kid from a non-MAP herd, you drop out of MAP. So what happens if you get a false ELISA positive? And these do happen, even if it's 99% um, sensitive, you still will get the odd false positive. So one out of 100. So what happens? You retest it. So you can either use a PCR test of blood or milk. And if that's positive, it confirms CAE. If it's negative, it doesn't really exclude infection because bearing in mind the PCR does not pick up all true positives. You can resample and retest the animal, testing the sample with an approved CAE ELISA. And if that second test comes back negative, the first test is regarded as negative. Uh, sorry, that goat's regarded as negative for the map. So even if you do get that unfortunate one in 100 false positives, it's not the end of the world. You don't chop out of map. You get that goat retested. But what happens if you get a true positive or both tests are positive? You drop out of the MAP scheme, you drop out of the database of herds in the MAP scheme, your herd is classed as infected and all those positive animals must be permanently identifiable, but that's a requirement anyway under the biosecurity plan. You won't be quarantined and you won't be required to destroy your goat, but you will drop out of MAP. So this um, table is from the manual and it gives you um, what happens if you do get a positive, either on the herd test, um, and then you've got a follow-up test, you maintain, if that follow-up test is negative, you maintain your status. If the follow-up test is positive, you're removed from the CAE map. And that goes for both blood tests and bulk milk tests. So there is a requirement for the annual review with your vet. And this is where you and your vet go through the checklist and you mark each point as either compliant or needs improvement or as not applicable. For example, there is a section on strays and you mightn't have had any strays. So both of you would, so the owner initials and dates that to saying there were no strays and that's acceptable. The annual review checklist covers record keeping, herd entry and property risk assessment, introduced livestock, movement of assessed animals, livestock ID, the herd management plan and testing. So what would it mean if you fail the annual review meeting? What happens then? If you fail, you will fail if you don't have current copies of the manual. That can be electronic or hard copies. So that's easily fixed. And I generally email the links to those prior to visiting. 
then you have uh, you must have a herd management plan. And in Queensland, there is a requirement for a biosecurity management plan. Anyway, you must the vet must have done a herd and property risk assessment. And if there is none, you will fail. Or if you falsified records, or if you refuse to be audited, then you will fail the annual review. So herds where there is these above critical defects are automatically suspended from MAP until a corrective action is completed. Okay. So that's the overview of the program. So why should you join? So it's much lower risk of for your customers if they buy goats from you because they can be reassured that you don't have CAE. You will be able to sell your goats to those who take biosecurity more seriously and are in MAP already. I will point out that there are still clinical cases of CAE in goats right now. Um, this particular goat here couldn't straighten its front leg. It's wasting away. And I saw that goat six weeks ago. So CAE is, even though it's reduced incidence, there are still a lot of cases of CAE out there. I have two clients with clinical CAE goats at the moment. Used to have three, but I destroyed two of them, goats of one of the clients. So the annual vet oversight is a good opportunity for the ongoing relationship with your vet. So you can get drench and pain relief prescriptions at your annual meeting bearing in mind that a vet must visit your property and see your goats before they can write prescriptions. And everyone needs a prescription because all drenches for goats need to be given at a higher level, higher dose rate, and that means you need a prescription. And Livestock Production Assurance do actually audit uh, any farm with a pick and they, they will ask to see those prescriptions. And also clinical signs will be investigated. And if it's not CAE, then you'll get other diseases identified. So the other thing I'm quite often asked about is how soon the CAE test will pick up clinical cases. The PCR tests picks up CAE a lot earlier. Now this was an, uh, an experiment uh, done last year, and they looked at tracheal inoculation. So that's the same as a goat coughing on another goat. And this is the time it took for goats to become positive. So in this case here, the PCR picked it up in four weeks, the ELISA picked it up in nine weeks, and the AGID test picked it up in 16 weeks. In this lot of goats here, uh, again, the um, PCR tests can be a lot earlier, but the ELISA tests in this case were pretty good and the AGIT tests were a lot longer in picking it up. This is again from Finlayson and Kirk's, Kirkland in 2019. And it looked at kids which were either given a high dose of CAE positive milk, so 350 mils compared with 3.5 mils of CAE positive milk. So this is um, 3.5 mils would be if you used a bucket for um, milking your CAE positive dose in and then use the same bucket and they had a bit of um, CAE positive milk still left in it because it wasn't cleaned properly and then used that to feed kids. Unfortunately, that used to happen. So let's have a look at what these results mean. 
So the PCR tests picked it up a lot earlier. And with the, um, so it picked, up, picked it up positives as early as 21 days, but um, for the high dose, but it, one PCR test in a low dose took 172 days to turn positive. The ELISA test, um, the first positive for the high dose was picked up at day 33. And the last one was picked up at day 112. For the low dose of milk, so the 3.5 mils of milk, the first positive didn't occur for 70 days. And one turned up positive at 172 days. The experiment only went for 300, 213 days. So some kids would have been positive after that. So I strongly recommend that you have a read if you're interested in the Finlayson and Kirkson report. And I've put the link here. It is quite technical, um, but the link is there if you wanted to have a read. So, these are critical links, and I did send the first three with the invitation. So Animal Health Australia has all the GOAT map manuals, both the biosecurity one, the CAE one, and the ONIS one. My website um, has free documents you can download about CAE. Um, so just go to my website and look for the CAE page. I've also got a YouTube channel. There's already one lecture about CAE that's been recorded and is up there. And I've also interviewed um, goat breeders at the height of the CAE in the dairy goats when we were very, very badly infected with CAE and uh, they can talk about how bad it was and how they thought they got infected and what they did to eradicate. I also have a Facebook page called Eradicate CAE in Goats and a lot of the references I've mentioned, I have have extracts and links to those references on that Facebook page. I try and post at least once a week on that page. Um, I also have a book um, that I self uh, publish, uh, which has all the references summarized um, in logical places. And it talks about blood tests, milk tests, methods of spread and uh, if you're really serious, you might like to have a look at that. It's well referenced and then noted. So we'll now open up for questions. And I'd like to ask what would encourage you to join the map? So let's have a look, put your questions in the chat function. So, so far people have just put in what, um, where they're from. So, a lot from Queensland. And I'll work out how to. Unmute people. So if you're so the question here is if you're already CAE accredited, I've spoken to Benendra. Um, he thinks they'll be transferred across, but it's still early days yet and they haven't made a firm decision. You can use uh, bulk milk tests um, to keep the accreditation up, bearing in mind you'll need two. Um, and you don't have to have a bulk milk. Work. <laughs> so if you um, if you don't commercially have a bulk milk vat, you can actually take milk samples from individual goats, chill them, 
add a preservative and send them to New South Wales so that um, they will then combine them and they'll test it by ELISA. So when are we likely to have bulk milk testing done in Queensland? I've asked that question. They said if there's enough demand, they have a, a, an officer in the lab who used to work at the ELISA, MacArthur, uh, MacArthur Agriculture Institute, and they could do it if there's enough demand. So here's an opportunity for goat societies to do some lobbying to get um, that bulk milk testing done in Queensland or in your state. I did look at Victoria. It's not on their list of samples tests uh, in the Victorian catalogue. Okay. Uh, milk testing. <coughs> so some, I knew someone would ask about prices. So I'll just go on to have a look and I'll bring up my slide. So um, the bulk milk testing is um, $23.93 plus the sample submission fee. So it has to be sent chilled to um, down to Sydney. So that would be, that means that there's a significant transport costs. Now, do you have to pay to join the scheme? And the answer is generally no. There is no fee mentioned either on the Animal Health Australia website. Um, however, I do know that New South Wales charge an administration fee, which I think is exorbitant just to pass on the forms to get into the database. Um, and they said that had these for Yoni's disease that had the support of the sheep industry. Um, so again, it's another opportunity for lobbying. Okay, so I can hear someone typing, so maybe they can put themselves on mute. Oh, sorry, Senator, that's me. Okay. Um, so what other questions do we have? Uh, I asked the question, does the milk milk sample have to be taken by a vet? Speaking to Animal Health Australia, they said yes, but I couldn't find it in the manual. So I phoned them. But the vet has to come anyway for the annual tests. Ah, can you keep sheep that are not MV tested with your mat goats? Uh, no. So they do. The manual just does say that um, we they don't don't test. They recognise that sheep can be a reservoir for CAE, and but they say there is no current tests available for testing of sheep, and so sheep aren't tested. Okay. Um, Tom has asked about. Um, CAE accredited with Queensland DAF. Uh, I've spoken to Benendra. His view is they should be transferred across, but that's yet to happen. So again, a bit of lobbying to make sure that happens promptly is a good idea. Now, I decided to um, do this presentation because there was nothing being promoted by Animal Health Australia. They wanted a soft launch to try and get any bugs out of it. Um, but I'm aware that some herds in Queensland, their CAE accreditation with the Department of Agriculture and Fisheries is going to lapse in a month or so. So we really can't wait. Uh, and so that I'm going to have to go out and do the forms for some of my clients so I thought I would actually go out, uh, do this presentation um, to make people aware. Are there specific labs you have to use if you're in the scheme? Uh, no, any of the uh, state laboratories can do the ELISA tests. Currently only New South Wales seems to be offering 
the bulk milk test, but that's based on demand. But Australia is in the very lucky position, unlike America, um, every veterinary laboratory in Australia is not accredited. So that's the National uh, Authority for Testing something or other. So basically they all have to have a QA system in, uh, in their lab and also they have to pass uh, proficiency tests. So every lab in Australia that offers CAE ELISA testing gets sent uh, blank samples to test and they have to get those samples, have to have the correct test result. If they don't get the correct test result, they can no longer offer the CAE ELISA test. It happened to Biosecurity Queensland Labs some time ago, a couple, I can't remember, maybe about five years ago. And so they had to send all their goat samples at their own cost uh, to New South Wales to get tested until their corrective action and they repassed their um, proficiency tests. So some of the Queensland members aren't up to date with technology so they'll find it difficult to comprehend. Well, I talk on CAE for free, so um, they can get um, me to come and talk to their local goat club. You just have to get me there and I don't charge for giving presentations on CAE. So I'll just go back a couple of slides because I did prepare some questions. So I did recommend that people might like to join together. So this will answer your question, Tom. So they can form a group and help each other do the forms. So they can have a session and try and do the forms together. So there's no reason you can't sit down and do those four compulsory forms in a group setting. So you can arrange a field day and then I can help you walk through those forms. Some things I think would help um, get people into the CAE map scheme. Currently in Queensland, you must be CAE accredited in order to show it shows for which there's uh, Dairy Dog of the Year points. So I'd imagine that that same rule would apply. And as people reach their date when their CAE accreditation by Queensland lapses, they would should be in the CAE map. So that's something that can happen. So um, milk processors in New Zealand have been given a date by which CAE must be eradicated from all their commercial herds. So that would, um, again, uh, encourage people to join MAP. Cost is a big factor. So, Kylie, you've asked what advice do we have for private vets in getting up to speed with MAPs? We actually do have a number of vets on this um, program and um, I will be promoting um, this recording to um, veterinary Facebook groups that I'm in. So they'll be able to watch this recording and um, get themselves up to speed. You can read the manuals to get yourself up to speed. Um, so that's going to be uh, a way that private vets can do it. And vets are used to reading manuals and um, disease control schemes. So I'm surprised no one's asked me this question yet, and that's how to reduce the costs. So, oops. So 
So to reduce the costs, so vets will charge by time in a lot of cases. So if you have extra help, if you ensure that all the tattoos of your dairy goats or all the ear tags are easy to read, that's going to minimise time of the vet on the farm and that's going to reduce costs. So another way to reduce costs is to use the bulk milk or vat uh, ELISA tests. So that's $28 compared to the uh, $770 or $14 or up to $17 for Victoria. I think Victoria charges. So Victoria charges $19.30 for a blood ELISA test. So um, by using the milk ELISAs, it's a lot cheaper. The other thing you can do is you can actually pool tests. So you can get five blood samples, five individual blood samples, and you ask the lab to combine the sera and test the sera. Now that only works if you're sort of certain that you're CAE free. So that's going to reduce the testing costs by pooling the samples. But of course, if you get a positive, then you've got to go back and get those five animals retested to work out who was the, the positive. Another way you can do it, and I quite often do this uh, for my clients, um, if you can transport the samples to the Biosecurity Queensland lab, if you deliver it themselves, then there's no tra uh, lab transport costs. So that works if you're in Southeast Queensland, close to the biosecurity lab. So that's an option to consider. I have a mud map and I have a photo of the entrance so that I can provide that to my clients. So if they deliver it themselves, they can reduce the fee. The other thing you can do is make sure you've got all the forms filled out You've got your map of your property uh, all ready to go and just have everything ready for the vet to do the risk analysis and um, sign all the forms. So there are ways that you can actually reduce the, the, the costs. Okay, so we've got another couple of questions that come in. No, so if the... Um, Yes, you can share the presentation with your vet. Um, once it's on YouTube, feel free. Um, I'm happy also to provide a PDF of the PowerPoints. So just send me an email. The other question was if you've got bucks or weathers and you're using the bulk milk vat tests, you don't have to test the bucks or the weathers or the kids because um, remember you're doing double the number of tests so they figure that um, that CAE will be spreading and they'll pick it up even though you're not testing the bucks. Okay, so I might stop the share so that we can have any other uh, questions. So feel free to, to ask them. If not, we're getting close to the hour. What's the population of goats in Queensland? Hmm. That's a good question. There was a Australian Veterinary, Associate, Veterinary Journal article that looked at the commercial dairy goat population in Queensland, and that's available. I can't remember the numbers off the top of my head. And, but then, of course, you've got boar goats, you've got meat goats, and you've got rangeland goats. Now, rangeland goats in the late 1970s, early 80s were uh, sampled to see if they had CAE, and the rangeland goats or ferals didn't have CAE. Although, if a feral, there were cases of ferals that were housed with dairy goats that were positive for CAE. 
So they can get CAE, it's just that they don't have it because of their extensive population and it never got into them, into that population. Okay, so, um, and boar goats, of course, can get CAE. Okay, so yes, the miniature goats, even though they generally test every year, um, there are not many in the CAE schemes. Not sure why. Um, I think it's because they like to share stock a fair bit, but they seem to um, not realise how badly effective CAE can be if it gets into a herd. It really devastates herds if it can build up. And just testing annually will not prevent you getting CAE coming into your herd. So I think we sh showed you how long it takes for a positive CAE animal to show up on an ELISA test. And just going back to those slides, some of them didn't turn positive until day 172. So even though they're doing annual tests, the day after those annual tests for the miniatures, they could introduce a new goat. That new goat could be positive, uh, which could be carrying CAE, could be spreading it in the herd, and they wouldn't pick it up until the next annual test, by which time they've spread, they've sold kids and they've spread it. Okay. There's, there's not very, even though Tasmania has this scheme, the last time I checked, there was none in that scheme. The scheme was very popular when Tasmania was exporting angoras to New Zealand. Um, but since that uh, market disappeared, um, most of the people in the Tasmanian CAE scheme dropped out. Yes, the miniature goat people see themselves as pets, breeders, but CAE devastates those people who have pet goats. There is no cure, there is no treatment. Those animals suffer. So they have very, very severe painful arthritis. They are wasting. Um, these people that who sell pet weathers to pet owners who get very attached to their pet goats. And I see a lot of them. I put them on um, pain relief and they'll stay on that pain relief for a couple of years, but eventually they have to be destroyed and the owners are devastated. So unfortunately, some commercial um, dairy goat farms do sell pet goats and a lot of those that come from certain herds that don't control CAE spread CAE. Yes, you can move into both the CAE and Yoni's map at the same time. Um, there's different sets of documents. Uh, I haven't covered Yoni's disease map I thought it was enough to do just CAE at this stage. The Yoni's disease map is pretty similar to the previous one. Um, the main difference is that you don't test for Yoni's until the animals are 12 months, not three months, because there's no test that will pick up Yoni's disease in a little kid. Okay. Did all the goats show positive in that trial? Uh, no, but they only kept that trial going for 213 days. So some of the goats that weren't positive, um, we don't know if they would turn positive after 213 days um, or if um, they, they were lucky enough to escape infection. Well, 
I don't think there's any more questions. Okay, so keep an eye on my YouTube channel and I'll get it up as soon as I've done a little bit of editing to the front and the, the end. Okay. Thank you very much. Good. Okay, and I am, Melina, just for you, I am talking to the British Goat Society uh, in November. Yes, we. I think it was supposed to be earlier this week and it was moved, yeah. I think. Yeah, yeah, it was moved because they said they didn't have enough time to um, publicise it. So Yeah, um, we had a postage strike oh. <laughs> and none of our journals arrived, so we wouldn't have known. Right. Um, yeah, so it's really good that we've managed to move it. So mm. thank you very much. It's very interesting. Okay, then. Well, good night, everybody, and I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you will join the CAE map, um, and the sooner the better. So I'll be starting soon with my clients, um, and I hope some of the vets on this talk tonight will also go out and encourage their goat owner clients to also join the scheme. Okay, so good night, everyone, and I'll end the webinar now. So, Thank night, you. everyone. Bye.